Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to season two of So Tell Me with Phil Bojuane, the show where questions about society and its utter stupidity are based on my mood for the day. My guest today is jazz musician and comedian Danny Backer. Danny is an up and coming jazz musician who brings back the classics from the golden age, and personally, I think that's the best one of all gold. Welcome to the show, Danny. How are you? I'm, I'm doing grand. Thank you for having me, Phil. More than welcome. So now we, let, just for the audience, which are about two or three people who watch the show, um, right. let them know Your how... Your mother and my mother. Yeah, and Alex and my <laughs> sister, who I don't have, who I lied to Phil Selman about uh, yesterday. We'll get into that uh, story later on. Yeah. But right. um, we, we met the Friars through a, a mutual friend of ours, uh, another useless comedian by the name of Mike Fine. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, the how... King of the yeah, exactly. That's right. And he's got those weird uh, uh, glasses, unlike these, which are very, very nice. He's got those weird ones, which look like someone is pissed on the lenses of it there with the yellow colored tinge that he has got going on. Yeah, yeah. right. He's so. sort of like stuck in the in the in the seventies with his with his with his look and his style, you know. And I think that that would be really hip if it were the right person, you know. He, I agree. He he sort of looks like a Jewish barber. I mean, do those exist? Jewish barbers? Or, yeah. Or, yeah, it was hard to tell with the accent there. I know you meant Baba, like sort of a uh, sort of a sheep, you know. <laughs> well, that's, but, uh, how, that's how we guys talk over here. I mean, we don't pronounce the uh, uh, the like you guys will say laugh, we'll say laugh. Oh yeah, no, no, you definitely have it all over us on the accent thing. Yeah. You know? I mean, the, the the New Jersey Jew thing doesn't really you know get the women like the like the Brits or the Australians, you know. But you're it's, it's exotic. You see, but you see, you end up, you end up getting married though, right? Aren't you married, man? Oh ah, well, yeah. I I got a girl already, so that's good. Yeah. You know, in fact, thanks to her, we're using uh, her Skype. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I, I, how how old are you that you don't even have Skype? You can know, with thirty five, um, thirty six. Well, you know, I kind of live like I'm I'm doing the music in the golden age. I kind of feel like no, I have Skype. I just forget what my handle is. Yeah. Do you call it a handle? Uh, I call something else a handle. If you know what I mean. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We're not gonna show this, right? <laughs> no, we are. We're not gonna show it. No, we're gonna show the show, but not that. Yeah. Th that's a different ball okay. game, different show altogether. So that's something that Alex does uh, in his free time. <laughs> that's the late night podcast. That's <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Alex is sort of like my Paul Schaefer, but he's a funnier version, and he's uh, someone. He's more like a punching bag. Now nah, I'm fucking okay. around with him. Yeah. And I'm he's just, your Paul Schaefer, but he doesn't speak. I haven't heard him say anything. <laughs> he's too shy to get on every now and then. But he, he he hates me deep down inside. He's like, why do I have to work for this guy of all people? Why him? <laughs> this host. He's, okay, but listen, I want to talk to you about the Golden Age because this is something you and I share in common because I am a huge fan of the Golden Age. Uh, when I talk about comedy, even music, I mean... I remember the days of the Rat Pack and uh, Sinatra, Sammy Davis, Dean Martin, mm, right. and then when we go back to comedians, I'm talking about Don Rickles and uh, uh, yeah. people like that. That that's my jam right there. I mean, for for uh, and I think that's the best word to use, right? And I yeah. was I was looking through your uh, uh, actually was listening uh, uh, through one of your albums yesterday and uh, looking through your uh, website and whatnot, and I had a listen and, and a go at the uh, at the songs, and very very talented singer, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I got, I got the, you know, I try to, to incorporate a lot of the different talents. You know, when I'm doing my music, I always like to bring my humor into the music so I can connect to the audience. That's kind of, I think, what separates me from a lot of jazz uh, artists today is the fact that you know they don't really, a lot of people don't connect so much, or they don't know the right way to connect to an audience. And I've been able to do that a lot with my sort of personality and my humor in my my jazz uh, performance. You know. Um, and uh, I think it's important, you know, that, that when you look back at the era of jazz, when it was a popular music in this country, meaning U.S., yeah. uh, you yeah. know, and around the globe, really, so many of the great performers were real entertainers, you know. They were real threats as opposed to they could act, they could perform, they could do comedy, they could dance, they could sing. You know, it wasn't sort of a, just like a one track uh, that you find a lot today, you know, and, and I have nothing against the performance or the style in which jazz has gone to today, but I feel that it's really nice to, if, if you can do it, you know, entertain entertain your audience, you know, it helps absolutely. keep, yeah, yeah, absolutely, helps keep this music going, which unfortunately we're losing losing our audience, you know. Uh, but but what what got you into this uh, particular uh, um, uh, genre of, mu of music? Because I mean, it's it's the best one. It's the most soothing. It's uh, the rhythm and blues. I mean, it's uh, it's jazz. It's it's uh, it's everything that you want in a, in a in a song, isn't it? 
it's fun. It's it's. I think it's fun, and, and I hope that when you listen to it, Phil, you got the idea that this wasn't just you know it was serious music, but it was a lot of fun too. It, you it know, was. my my goal is sort of to get your legs and and you know moving and your feet moving and anything else that you can move. Really, which which you know? leg you're talking about? Getting back to the handle again. I see. Like, Here we go. Right. <laughs> and I don't mean I don't mean <laughs> and I don't mean handles Messiah. No, but but. Uh, <laughs> Well, so, they do call me a brown Jesus, so if that's what you want to say. <laughs> so, yes, yes. Well, you know, he was Jewish too, actually. He was, and he he was. Uh, are you Jewish? He, he, are, I, are you Jewish? I'm I'm a brown man. I'm Indian. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't yeah, matter at all. Got, like the glasses, and you've got the name Phil, so yeah. you're kind of happy there, you know. I know. I, I, actually, Phil, the other Phil yesterday was taking a, having a go at my last name yesterday, so we had a bit of a, a roast battle going on uh, on a podcast. So I don't know. You should take a look at that one. It was pretty good. I Bo think it's pretty good. Did I get that right, Juan J? Is that correct? <laughs> Everyone's getting it wrong. It's Bojwani, actually. Oh, that's that was my second guess. Yeah, well, I, mean, so, I have to see it spelled out phonetically. That's, that's, you know. <laughs> but but I love that that people it keeps you second guessing all the time, right? So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there we go. I'm actually looking at your website right now, and it says "swing that music," and that's exactly what it does. I mean, it's it hits the ball out of the park. Actually, I mean, it's very, very, yeah. it's very good. Um, and with the um, uh, now, do you, do you do stand up as well by any chance, or is it just all music? I, I prefer I prefer to sit down just because yeah. you know it's at the end of a long day and and. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Well, so don't wear I used to do, you know, it's funny. I used to do a lot more stand up with my brother. We were a team, you know. So, like, if if I was to like do some of my stand up for you right now, um, I don't. would only have the setups. My brother had all the punch. The punch lines. So it sort of it really wouldn't, you know. I it, would set it up, and he wouldn't be here to 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 to, to have. Uh, but is that why your your Facebook account has Josh and Danny on it together? Is that is that your yeah, brother? Yeah, that, that's all part of the, the the mysterious kind of you know uh, approach to social media we originally took. Yeah. At the time, you know, when we set that up so many years ago, we were working a lot as a team. You know, so we had that set up, and we're like, well, you couldn't do two people, so we we faked out Facebook. You know, the the geniuses at Facebook, and put an M. You know, and now. All we get is you know a lot of lot of uh, so you know my brother he got married he's off on his own I'm, we still have this joint Facebook thing you know and it's like has gotten so far and we have so many thousands of people there as part of it that I feel like it's too late now to turn back yeah if we were to split up on Facebook it could you know cause great great problems now, now uh, what's the uh, age difference with you and your brother Are you guys close. Uh, we're very close, and, and we're we're, uh, we're 18 months apart, actually. That's amazing. Me and my younger brother are 18 months apart as well. Look at that. Are you guys close? No, but uh, anyway. Uh, no, we're all right. I'm just joking. We're okay. But he's uh, we're, we we just don't want to have any uh, anything to do with each other in terms of work. Uh, that's pretty much it. But yeah, yeah. who's the older one? Are, the, are you the older one or the younger one? People think I'm the older one but because I'm more mature and yeah. I have sort of that, you know. But my brother, actually, he's, he's the older one. He's the older know? one. Yeah, well. in, in age only. In age only, because I am more mature. Well, I, 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 I really am the older one, and my younger brother is more mature than I am, so it's sad. And, and then we have, we, uh, have to, we have the baby, the older brothers. You know, we're I sort know. of like the big, the big little brothers, I guess, they're, right? They're, they're jerks. Uh, no, I'm the older one actually, but I have, I, I'm actually a middle child amongst three boys. I have an older brother, but my younger one and me are, are uh, uh, 18 months apart. So, but not twins. Thank God for that, because I'm much better so you're looking. A, you're a Larry. Is that what you're telling me? You're a Larry. What's a Larry? What, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm referring to the Stooges since we're talking about oh, golden sorry. age. Oh, okay. See, this is how a, that went through my head. You got me on one over there. I, 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 I haven't slept in in days, and I apologize, audiences, for my lack of foresight on that one. Yeah, I'm a Larry. Yeah, you got me on that one. Okay. Yeah, I just yeah, made that, a fool of myself in my own show. That's a position, I imagine. I'm not a middle child. I almost was a middle child, but then my parents had a, you know, my mother had a miscarriage, so we never really had that. Yeah. We never really got that. Yeah, my I think my mom had had two as well, but let's let's uh, move on from that, from that. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, real uplifting conversation here. <laughs> I know this is something we don't want to put on air. I mean, we we didn't get a chance to talk much of the fries because we let oh, we let Mike Fine do most of the talking. Alex, Mike Fine kept on yapping and yapping and yapping. But look, Mike, if yeah. you're listening to the show, which I doubt you are, look, we we love you. We're just making fun of you. You only roast the ones you love, right, Danny? That's right. That's right. That's our that's our motto at the Friars. You exactly. Know? And. and uh, Thanks to you two, you gave me. Uh, you guys offered me the membership for the uh, for the Friars Club, and somehow we, because of my flight uh, schedule, I never end up uh, getting the uh, never ended up getting there. But uh, one day when I'm back in New York, we'll sort of uh, sort that out. You're in. Just you say the word, Phil, and you're in. Thank you. Appreciate that. 
right. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We're, we're talking we're talking about roasts and whatnot. I just wanted to uh I remember one time that uh the Comedy Central did the fries roast of uh, Donald Trump and uh he's been... I, th- I think that was actually the Comedy Central what happened they took over the roast yeah. and it used to be with the Friars Club and then they kind of stopped doing it and then did their own roast. So uh, when, when was the Trump one? Do you remember what year that was? Uh I think it was 20 20- 12 uh this was before he he uh, uh, tw- uh before the time he just announced that he want that he was at some point going to run for president i think so i was a couple of years four maybe three or four years ago uh just after obama's uh, fourth year and uh, uh just just to touch on wh- uh, when we talk about the fries roast i rem- i always remember the dean martin roast Th- those were the days where the was that was the yeah. actual fries roast which was the the classics uh uh, today it's be- it's become a different ball game. I understand that, but I, I right. h- how is the country doing in terms of uh, ever since Trump has been elected and uh, uh, h- how are things in New York at the moment? Oh boy, well you know it's an interesting question. I I think it really all depends on who you ask, Phil. You know because for me, you know it was a very dark day. You know and it's funny because I, I I put up on Facebook that you know the night that Trump won the presidency you know mm. when we kind of figured out that this was inevitable my cat threw up about eight times <laughs> now i don't know if that was a coincidence or you know a i don't think so yeah. I, I think that he was making some sort of political commentary he, uh, he, you know he's, he probably yeah, was my, yeah yeah my cat is a transsexual so he clearly wouldn't be uh uh, and this is not, I'm not, no joke, he's actually a transsexual. He used to be a boy, to, used to be Ollie, now he's Molly. Well, you, um, you, you, he, you should get him together with Alex. Alex has, has got the same problem going on, if it's a problem. I'm, just, sorry, I'm sorry, Alex, he used to be Alexa, is that, this is sort of a whole, <laughs> well, good, you know, we're, in a, we're living in a world where this this is acceptable and, and we're, you know, it's more power to him. It's all right, it's okay, Alex, you can, you, you can come out, you're fine, yeah. He's a bit. He's well, a bit... I saw I saw long hair, and I, I had some questions, but I you know I only got a quick glimpse of him, so I, I didn't really we, you we, know. But, we, but... We should, Alex, Alex, come in the picture for a moment. You always get one. We get one go at this only. Come on, and then you know I could die tomorrow. You could, Phil. Yeah, wouldn't that be a shame? <laughs> oh yes, yeah, she, she's lovely. She's lovely. And, you know, I got to tell you, whatever whatever bathroom you want to go in, you, you go right ahead and don't feel uncomfortable. You know, okay. I like actually what Alex has got. He's kind of got like a Thor thing going. Yeah. A Thor. <laughs> It's a bit of a punchy one. Like Thor meets Gwyneth, Thor meets Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, that that's makes exactly sense. what it is. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. It's, uh, it goes well well with uh, both look. the ladies and the men. So um, <laughs> wait a minute, speak a little more. I can't hear you, Alex. Speak a little. Yeah, more. Say something. I was just saying, yeah, the Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> the uh, guys love that, and then the Thor. The girls just uh, go crazy. So we um. So I'm just kidding. What is that accent? I can't hear. Where, where are you from, Alex? <laughs> I'm from. Uh, <laughs> South uh, S- South Africa. Uh, is he really from South? Where are you going, Phil? I no, see like no, glasses. Yeah. And I see a nose. <laughs> I'm from, I'm from I, Melbourne. He's he, he's oh, really okay. He's yeah. true blue, t- typical Aussie. He's a true blue Australian boy. Oh, okay. born you and surf? bred. Are you a surfer? Uh no, no. Look look at the body. Is that is that a body of a surfer right there? <laughs> Look at that! I can't. All I see is an arm. I see a white arm and a black T-shirt, and and then the long locks. Well, you know? tr- trust me, you don't want to see anything else. <laughs> Has I seen enough? Is that? Yeah, you've seen enough. But um, but no, Alex is the best. I mean, this guy is uh is uh, uh he, without wait, without wait, without, wait. without this guy. What's that? Wait, <laughs> I'm, wait. I'm listening. I'm listening to my CD. Oh, are you? Is that right? I want. I want, is this time to plug? Yeah, I'm plug it. Plug, go ahead, plug it. Plug it right now. Yeah, well, this is this is right now for sale on DannyBackerMusic.com, my website. We're doing a Cyber Monday sale. It's regularly twenty dollars, mm-hmm. but it's nineteen ninety nine today. Cyber Monday sale. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you hear that? Swing that music. Swing by the stores. Pick up this album if it's in Australia. Is it in Australia? I think it is actually. It's it's um, Naxos is the distributor for my record label, and it's all over. All over the world, but if you pick it up from my website, it's then I actually get the money. That's oh. why I'm saying don't go to the stores. Go to my website, Cyber Monday. Can you see that? We can see That's... it. Put it a bit back. So... Yeah. Okay. Perfect. There we go. We can see that. that. Yeah. Look at that punter. That's me. If I go. That's okay, Danny. Look. That's Danny Backer right there. The uh, the jazz musician. What? When's your album uh, coming out, Alex? No. Uh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's a good. Uh, we we'll uh, pick up the. What was the website again? Well, if you go to dannybackermusic.com, yep, that's D A N N Y B A C H E R music, you know how to spell that, M U S I C dot com. Oh, it's not, it's, it's not M U Z I K? 
Oh yeah, it's Z. It, it, that's right. You guys say Z there, right? No, yeah, but uh, yeah, no. We say we see Z or Z. We say I say both, but yeah, I'm. But it's I'm, not. It's 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 M M U S I C. So yeah, I there's there's no Z. I there's know. no Z. Don't just, confuse the people, Phil. That, 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 <laughs> that's the one right there, right? That's your website right there. There you go. Look at that. There we yeah, go. Yeah, that's my spread in the Jazz it is magazine. That has a few Zs. There's three Zs. Yep. That that doesn't mean to, to, that you fall asleep, does it? What Zs? Three Zs. Yeah. I don't think so. Is yeah. it? Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah. Like, like the yeah. three Z. <laughs> So, perfect, it sounds like an app or something, the, one of yeah. those emojis. So there we go. I'm going to sh- uh, lift up my own computer so everyone can see this. Uh, this is the uh, Danny's page, so check it out. Uh, and it's uh, really good fun, yeah. good music, and it's uh, a swing, and swing by the down. page. I think there's like a scroll down that, that gives you the option to buy the album. Or, you know, if yep. you scroll down, Everything yeah, there's all there. these. Yeah, there you go. Keep going. The there's New a New York Times New York review. Times. And then, then, then down at the bottom, I think it says buy a purchase album now. Is that where it says there? Yeah, they've, they've called you a prodigy as well, haven't they? These are the dates. Yeah, I've got uh, the upcoming dates. If you're in New York, anyone listening is in New York. There we go. I'll be um, January 5th. Yeah, if you just go to the different pages, you'll see. Yeah. This is the album. But um, I'll be uh, at Birdland, you know, the famous jazz, uh, jazz club, Birdland, yep. on January 5th. 6 p.m. with my with my group. All right, perfect. So, and uh, that's uh, that's that's a upcoming gig that you have. You know, I have a lot of upcoming gigs. Yeah. That's a, that's an exciting one. That's coming an exciting up. one. That's uh, in January. Yeah, and I'll be at in Carnegie Hall in June. Wow, that's a big deal. And, uh, yeah. So. That's nice. So you know things things are things are keeping uh, keeping busy. You know. You, you got but, any of uh, those uh, those vocal techniques before you get on? Like you start croaking and stuff. Oh, you're talking about like my warm ups? Yeah. Yeah, I do warm ups, you know. I don't like to share because, you know, the singers' warm ups are a very personal thing. Okay, you know? I did and not know that. I really am not. If I show that, the, you know, they might take my whole act if yeah. they start with my warm up. No, I mean, just, you know, it's about opening the throat and, and doing a lot of, oh, oh, you know, stuff like that. And woo, kind of vocal slides. And then, uh, you know, blah, 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 with your tongue. You, you move your tongue around. You chew your tongue like that. Yeah. That's all good. And then, mm, you know, really want to get the tongue loose that's important i tell the same people that when they're going on a date <laughs> now th- those you techniques just... they actually work do they i mean what like you know what happens in the morning when i wake up i start croaking like this <clears throat> if you do that what happens on stage i mean if you start croaking like a frog and uh, are they going to come by and see the show you probably get uh, <laughs> kermit wants to make love to you i don't know <laughs> i don't usually do the croaking thing you know? add, the tex- your add, add the texaco theater with milton burl will do that We'll, we'll, we'll raise Milton yeah, Burl okay. from the dead and we'll start croaking because he's already croaked anyway. <laughs> so you might be wondering what all this stuff is behind me, by the way. You're probably saying, this happens to be one of the, the world-class Laurel and Hardy collections. I I, you know, you talk about these, you know, golden age. And, and I go, I, my, my real love of the, the classic comedy would be like, you know, the Marx Brothers and Laurel and Hardy and Chaplin. And, but this, this room is filled with like, you know, props and costume pieces you can't really tell. I don't know if you can. No, I can see. It's see. it's it's like an antique store, and that's very very nice. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit like, weird, but it's actually, nice. You can see, there's a suit, couple of suits there. Oh, that, that, that were. Uh, is that your bat? Is that your bat suit? What's that? Is that the is that's, that the bat suit you got in a night? Yeah, that's that's my bat suit. Yeah. And and uh, yeah, and I got my. I'm just. I was trying to show you, and over here, like you can see some hats. There's like a little derby back there where my thumb is, and. So there's a lot of like that's a that's a prop oil painting from their film Chump at Oxford from 1939. Yeah, I was gonna um, I was I'm, gonna ask it eventually about all this stuff. It's very very nice. I mean, so you're a big Lauren Hardy fan. I, what, what, so these were your influences growing up, were they? I mean, these guys Sinatra well, Hardy. They're the, reasons, they're the reasons why my brother and I got into this business. You yeah. know, at first was because we love like watching these old classic comedies. And, you know, what would happen when we were really young kids, my, this is before VCRs, okay, I'm yeah. dating myself here. Mm. I'm only in my 30s, but, like, so we, my parents used to go down to the uh, the library and take out these, these uh, video, you know, the um, uh, film strips, you know, yeah. and they would bring them home, these silent movies, and we'd watch Chaplin and Laurel and Hardy, and we loved them. And then we would have kids over, and we would have, like, birthday parties, you know, instead of playing, like, you know, Atari and stuff, we were watching these silent films, you know, and then we kind of got into comedy but then you know when i was about 10 years old i got into music my grandparents especially my mother's father who was a world war ii vet he was in the navy both grandfathers were and he was so taken by this music you know of the big band era like 
you know, Count Basie, Duke Ellington, uh, Benny Goodman. So it was kind of like both worlds. Because we liked that older style of comedy, then we kind of got into that style of music. So I've always been kind of a bit of an old soul, if that makes sense, you know? It does completely. I mean, I, I same thing goes with me with the, with the comedy, though. I mean, I still watch Rickles when I'm unhappy. When, he's the only thing that sort of... Uh, if, if I'm down and about, uh, down, sorry, down, not down. About, if I'm if I'm feeling low, I I pop a bit of Rickles on YouTube and I'm a happy man again. I'm smiling with the Dean Martin roast and uh, you get yeah. him and then uh, um, uh, Alan King on and I'm good to go. You know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that Borscht Belt. Oh, well, they're very funny guys. Absolutely. You know, and they've all influenced us. I've I've been very lucky to have gotten to meet so many of them. You know, and and uh, you know, I met Jerry Lewis. I've met Don Rickles. I've met uh, you know. Um, Carl Reiner, I met Mel Brooks, you know, wow. I've gotten to meet a lot of great that, people. I met Bob Hope, actually. Did you? Which was really, yeah, that, I got to meet Bob Hope. Lucky. He was older at the time, and I yeah. kid you not, you know, I asked him, do you have any tips for breaking into show business? And he, you know, was in his, you know, mid-90s at this point, and he gave me some very good advice. He looked at me and he went, ah, that's what Bob Hope said to me. <laughs> that sounds like something Jerry and Lewis would do, though, actually. Yeah, you well, know, Jerry Lewis is a little higher pitch. He's a bit higher pitch. <laughs> Jerry Lewis. Yeah, but but uh, but you know, it's so interesting because you know I may meet so many great people at the club too. But I, I've gotten to see a lot of these people perform, and you know, a lot of my idols. So it was really neat to have gotten to meet so many of these people. You know, you know? what was funny was that when when you go, just go back to uh, when you said your cat threw up, and you thought whether it was coincidence and how the world works and whatnot. It was funny because I I I, I didn't. I, let me tell you a story. When I went to meet uh, Mike at the Fries for dinner. Um, we just went to that. Uh, what do you call that dinner room of uh, you guys have? It's uh, there's a name for it. I don't know what it's called. Um, and uh, you have a, dining room. Dining room. Okay. And you have a bunch of pictures of the old school comedians up there, some of them and whatnot. And I just sort of uh, sat down at a place I thought I was going to be comfortable at. And uh, when I flew back, eventually back to Singapore and Australia, I was looking through some of the pictures from the fryers, and I had sort of uh, something just told me to sort of zero in on a picture on the picture up above me. And as I uh, enlarged the the picture on my phone. I saw that the picture that I was seated below was a picture of my favorite comedian, Don Rickles. Just like yeah. that. I mean, uh, and uh, meeting that guy, I don't know. I mean, it's a badge of honor to get insulted by him. I hope he did that to you because if not, he probably hates you. No, he insulted the whole audience. Yeah. You know? I mean, when we were watching him, you know, it's sort of like being blessed by the Pope. Exactly. But we were insulted by Don Rickles. Well, In fact, the... I'd probably rather be yeah. insulted by Don Rickles. I agree. I agree. That's what they do. I mean, he's... It's the, it's the Jewish equivalent of being blessed by the Pope. Really. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. That's the perf perfect way of putting it because uh, he's the best. Uh, and you're lucky you got to meet him because I really, really do. I, I mean, I remember he came on Jimmy Fallon, uh, Fallon lately. He goes on Kimmel now. He still kills. He's 90 years old and he's still doing the best. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. And Jimmy yeah. Fallon's a moron as far as I'm concerned, but we won't get into that, I think. But, um... Uh-oh. Like Jimmy, I think he's, uh, he's, a, he's a charming fellow, you know? <laughs> I haven't met him. Yeah. Uh, did you meet him? Did you run into him? Yeah, that's why I called him a moron because I have met him. No, I'm just. Oh, okay. just well, tell just, the story. I want to hear this too. No, I'm just joking. Just by looking at the show, it's a game show. I mean, it's wh what's he doing late night for? He should be running Jeopardy. <laughs> it's all games. Every what? Hey, listen. You know. Yeah. As, go ahead. As those talk shows go, I feel that you know it's like there's been so many talk shows out and so many different hosts, and I always felt that like. You know, he's someone, to me, I, feel, I find him charming, you know, yeah. um, and that's important to be charming when you run that. There, there's so many of these shows now. He's, he's endearing it's in a like, very you know, childlike way. I can I can get that. I get why people like it. And in today's day and age, people want something lighthearted. And I guess he offers you that. That's pretty much what it is. I mean, he's catering to the uh, to the, to the audience. I mean, I'll give him that much. But as I think he's a Gen Xer. He's a Gen Xer. You know, he caters to that, yeah. that, that he's more like generation. A, he's more like a millennial, in fact, actually, I think. The way Millen he's, yeah, Millen yeah, 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 but but I mean, uh, I mean, if uh, I I guess maybe I'm just all about the old school. I mean, I sort of don't like where the comedy's gone today. But I mean, it is what it is. You know, it is how things go. But yeah. um, I, th I think so. It's like you know, uh, if it's funny, right? I mean, you know, so many of the comics that that I've loved, and uh, you know, if it's funny, it's funny, no matter what style. You know, sure. and I have my own opinions about certain styles. Like a lot of the, the the sitcoms today, I don't even watch. Same here. And a lot of uh, uh, you know, sort of the uh, the films, a lot of the comedy films. You know, it's like, and I remember the day when and I'm going to sound like an old fart, but I mean, like you know, even let's say the 1980s. You know, when John Hughes and people like you know Harold Ramis were writing films in the 90s. You know, comedy was still, I think, king in that it sense. Was, it that was. It was like. 
like someone like something like Groundhog's Day, for example, right? I mean, you know, what a brilliant film that 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 is, you know. Or like looking at the films like the Vacation movies with Chevy Chase, you know, the Bill Murray's, the John Candy's of that day. Those were funny, funny movies, yeah, you and know. And I I know that now I've gone into this Judd Apatow thing, yeah. And I don't quite always get it. I I agree. I mean, I I, I sort of I don't mind people like uh, Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill, but I mean, if you go back to like Steve Martin and those guys, uh, I mean, they're still alive and they they did comedy the way it should be done. But like you said, I mean, it's it's objective, it's subjective at the same time. It really depends on on how you approach it. But I mean, look at the film like Three and. You know, you mentioned like Martin Short, you know, it always cracks me up. And, and these guys are funny today. You know, I, I mean, you know, I, I still see the Steve Martin, you know, and Robin Williams was such a great talent. Yeah. Billy Crystal. But I guess they're kind of like hearkening back a little bit to an older, simpler time. This, this I think very relevant, though, today. I mean, people they are still funny if, uh, as far as I'm as far as we're concerned, I guess. Right. I mean, uh, huh. yeah. Well, well, one of the things that my wife and I talk about because my wife's an actress, and yeah. and you know we we're always you know it's always like a critique of certain things when we see it because we're coming from a performer. So most of the time when you're a performer and you watch something, you're always gonna go, hmm, you know, what would I have done differently about that, or you know, and then but but frankly, we say that a lot. There's a lot of arch in performance today, you know, in the yeah. comedy, a lot of sarcasm, and you know, it's kind of it's sort of it's taking comedy to the negative. Mm. As opposed to the positive, does that make sense? It does. Uh, it does. I mean, but uh, it, it, I guess people are so fed up with being a uh, politically correct that they they sort of, I mean, want to go the other way every now and then. Because I mean, comedy has to be truthful. If you're not truthful with the comedy, then there's no point doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I guess yes, to to each his own. But I mean, uh, for me, I mean, the, the old is always gold. I mean, the, the, they, that, yeah. that's a saying for a reason. So. But, I know, I know. Well, you're preaching to the choir, Phil. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why you're on the show. I mean, I wouldn't have uh, a, a guy who's maybe 20 years old doing stupid pet tricks. I'm mean, not pet tricks. I mean, magician tricks outside on the street. I don't need that. You know? It's not something that, that appeals to me. I mean, it's... Oh, it's, it's that, that was actually going to show you my... my I was going to show you my finger trick. But that's now, okay. forget that's, it. No, forget that's it. Right. <laughs> no, that's, but that's old school, though. That's okay. <laughs> that's all right. But um, all right, yeah. before I sign off, uh, uh, Danny, I always close the show with one question. And uh, give me an, an answer of whatever you whatever you want. Uh, as a society, historically, what were we before? What are we now? And what are we heading into the future? As a society, you're talking about a world global yeah, community. Glo here? Global community, yeah. Well, I think that that's an interesting question. I think that you know we were <laughs> we were sort of xenophobic. Because we were we were limited, right, on like travel and communication, right. Right now, right now we're kind of in. Well, I, I guess I should say if we go way back. That then we get into like you know the world is a small place because now we have like you know the internet and we've got things like this where we could be talking in Australia and I'm here in New Jersey and you know right across the river from the city and we're talking. It's Tuesday at noon, and it's still Monday night here. That's all great. It makes the world small. We've got this open-minded thing. But now I think people are getting scared of this, and we're going back to xenophobia. That's a good answer. Right? I think that's a good answer. Fair enough. You sort of, sort of concise and, and precise and, and you succinct. I like that. Because uh, yeah. yesterday I asked Phil this question. He just he sort of got off his seat and walked away. Maybe he was find the answer yeah right? maybe he, may, maybe he was trying to find the answer maybe it was like he, he, i have had i've had enough of you looking. put me on the spot that's, that's a good yeah. question where yeah. have we been where, where are we going and you know i don't know i mean it's like listen i'm always one that looks to the future in an excited sort of way you know yeah. I, I kind of approach things in a positive upbeat way so i'm excited about the future i just as a society when you say it that way i feel that you know there's things that are that have been great in the past that we need to go back and embrace, like communication uh, to one another, True. Absolutely. you know, as opposed to living life through a machine, you know? Absolutely. Every, all these little devices, it's like, you know, I, I do some work with Dominic Kianese. Do you know Dominic, who was Uncle Junior in The Sopranos? Yep, yep, I know, I know. Of course, my favorite show, he's how could I forget? And, you know, he's, he's a great friend, and, and, you know, he's a friend through the Friars, and we do a lot of shows together because he's also a musician. A musician, yeah. And, you know, he gets so upset, like, when he sees all these people taking out these little devices. Oh, I want to pick take a picture of Uncle Junior. He's like, you know, put him away. He's like, live in the moment. Exactly. Live in the moment. Exactly. And I think that's a really good, you know, that's watch, not a bad thing. Watch the show. Take one picture, then watch the rest of the show. Stop taking 10, 20 pictures. One is enough. That captures everything. Well, there's nothing worse than it, like Fourth of July. You know what Fourth of July yeah, is here, yeah. right? Yeah, it's your. It's your uh... I don't know what it is in Australia. What is it? Just another day in Australia? 
Today? Yeah, today is just another day. It's just another... No, not today. I mean the 4th of July. What's Australia Day. Australia Day. So it's like, and what does that mean? What is Australia Day? Same thing as your 4th of July. It's your independence. Oh, you the crap out of the British? In Australia, according to uh to history of the Abor Aborigines, the same thing that what you guys did with uh, when Christopher Columbus sort of. Wait, uh, made I lost. A mistake. The, I lost. What did the What did the Aborigines do? Well, Alex wanted to chime in on this because he's the, he's the Aussie. I live half the time somewhere else. I wasn't born over here. He was. Oh okay. Yeah, I don't know Australian history that well. You're like well. Alaska. You're like Alaska. Yeah, no, it's so like I ha I have refugee status everywhere I go. I live all over the world. I mean, I, no one knows where I live. I'm like I'm like I I'm I'm actually the Dark Knight. Look at my skin color. Look at the way I am. If I take out the glasses, I'm Superman and the Dark Knight combined. That's who I am. <laughs> you know, you're always welcome to park a tent right here in Cliffside Park. So so yeah. I, I, I was just going to say that, uh, um, you know, 4th of July. What the hell was I talking about? Oh, yeah, 4th of July. Yeah. People are filming, and they're watching fireworks, right? But they're filming it with their iPhones, yeah, exactly. watching it through the, the – and it's like – to, yeah, to, to anyway. a different lens. Watch okay. it through your actual lens, not that lens. I mean, they're taking pictures. Just enjoy the moment. Exactly. I completely understand. But um, yeah, on uh, on that note, Danny, look, uh, uh, we uh, we've done a good thirty minutes, I think. Uh, thank you for coming on. A good, at least, my pleasure. Thank you for having me, and enjoy the music. Keep on swinging, and uh, and I do mean musically. All yeah, right? tell absolutely. Alex that. Uh, Alex, yeah, he he all says, right. he says no. no worries. And uh, look, uh, I'll uh, everyone, please go check out this album. It's a uh, it's a ver the it's a uh, it's it's got a bunch of good songs on it, and uh, Danny's a very very talented singer. It's on the Grammy ballot. Grammy ballot. There we go. Wow, that's a big deal. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. But we'll uh, yeah. I thank you for the time, Phil. It's great seeing you. And come back to New York. All right, we I, miss you. I will likewise, my friend. Hope to see you in Australia at some point or in Asia at some point soon. Please give me a call if you're ever down. All right? You got it, man. Be all good. Right. Take care, buddy. Cheers. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.